Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another AFK Journey video. And today we're gonna do an honor dual mode guide for AFK Journey. This is the game mode that is currently featured in the live event. It is some of the best PVP in this game because you can be a whale, you can be a free to play player, you can be a mid spender dolphin, it doesn't matter. Everybody gets the same experience in honor dual. I called it a mix of Magic the Gathering drafting and team fight tactics. If you like either of those things and you like afk journey i think this is going to be the game mode for you now keep in mind everything i say here this game mode is still in beta for like another 30 days but we can go through the basics here i'm going to give you some tips on how to win so you can go for that you know beautiful nine wins before you get three losses record to really climb in those rankings let's talk about it now as soon as you click play you're going to be presented with this screen and here's where we see the first difference between honor duel and the traditional pvp in this game you don't get to pick your artifact right like when you're in regular pvp in this game you can pick your healing artifact or your crowd control the backline art uh, artifact or your fireball you know your tank one whatever here you're going to be presented with three random choices out of a huge list and a random one if you just want to uh let let fate decide these are your artifact and they do very very different things for example the luxurious satchel right here if you click on this grants all allied light bear heroes attack physical defense and magic defense bonuses equal to five percent of the total stats of all light bear heroes for 10 seconds these bonuses are activated every 10 seconds you level this up by getting artifact exp as you play through the matches and we can click that right here you join battles to obtain two ascend any hero to obtain three and send any hero twice to obtain two more so that's how you level up your artifacts right there this is a big deal this is how you're going to build you must like tip pro tip number one build around your artifact and so like let's say you were going to pick luxurious satchel let's say you pick this one it's going to give you this to start with you get uh two light heroes and a graveborn hero and 60 honor badges these honor badges and we'll go into this here in a second you use them in the shop in between each fight to buy duplicates or more characters or to buy gear and there's definitely a strategy there so if you pick luxurious satchel it's definitely leading you towards playing a mono light team which is not always a great idea in the main game or at least a very heavily light team because your light units are going to get this big buff and the rest of your units aren't if you were to pick like pure nectar you'd be focusing on elite heroes so grants all grants allied mythic heroes so you have to you know take them all the way up to mythic 15 percent base stats two seconds after the battle starts grants allied legendary and mythic heroes 18 percent basic stats 10 seconds after battle starts so if you wanted to play this one you would really want to focus on buying character dupes as early and often as you could which honestly you're going to probably do that anyway but it will be some sort of sustaining team so you can live until you get this big 10 second buff and then hopefully you'll just be teeing off on people this is not one that i've played but it is kind of a generic one if you picked this you're really free to kind of go into any you know you want to play graveborn nature people lightborn you know you want to play the uh i call them the savannah people i know that's not what they're all the brawlers you can play any of those you want glowing blossom all deployed heroes lose 20 percent of their current age HP when the battle starts but restore 200 energy over the next three seconds this is a pretty powerful one giving you access to those you know those ultimates early and you start with a rowan copy kind of further enhancing your team's ability to like cast early ultimates and let that be how you build a team to win so you pick one of these to build around now i have loved playing mono light that has been my favorite squad so i'll pick luxurious satchel for the sake of this one Boom, I select it. I get those three heroes and the 60 coins. In between every round, you're gonna see this dual store. You can refresh the dual store for three coins. So should you refresh or should you buy? Here's how I think about this. This, uh, I've played a lot of team fight tactics in my day and I'm kind of using a similar ideology here. First thing, the first tip I'm gonna give here, make sure you have five heroes for your first fight. Your first fight, you're gonna be playing somebody else who's in their first fight. If you have a like well-balanced team, like you have some tanks, some supports and a good damage dealer, 
you'll probably win your first fight. In fact, if you follow these tips I'm giving, I never don't win three. I think like I've probably played this a hundred and some times and one time I did not win three matches. So I've had good luck that has won me nine matches. I've had bad luck where I've gotten my three losses with only two wins, but that's only happened like once. And if you're getting to that three win mark, that's gonna guarantee you, you climb in the rankings or at least you don't fall. Once you get near the top of the leaderboards like where I am now, now, three wins will oftentimes just keep you where you are. But if you're winning less than three matches before you lose three, you will tank in the ranking. So follow these tips. Now, what is worth buying? I have the luxurious satchel. I want light bear heroes. So the very first thing I want to focus on, if you are focused on playing a single element more than anything else in the, the early and mid game stages, and honestly, until you have all your characters fully ascended, this triple light bear buy is the best thing you can buy, especially in these early rounds. In fact, you have 60 coins to start with or 70, depending on what artifact you chose. I would refresh a couple of times looking for this. If you were like, if you were just gonna play lightborn or the lightborn whatever the light characters you want to buy that so spend your 33 coins boom now right here an interesting kind of thing happened so i'm glad this the cloud this popped up i caught a vala dupe which is excellent so i want to ascend her as fast as i can but then i caught two copies of lucius I only have four people. I must now buy more heroes. I can only afford the three random heroes, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I get lucky and I catch not only another light hero, but I catch a decent one in Merrily. And I have a two tank setup I could play, or I could, you know, I have some wilder people here. I have another Graveborn. I have four light characters that can start being the foundation to my team. And I have a useful at least tank I can throw into the front line to soak some damage early. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to do my first fight now, and I'm going to give you the first tips about team building once you're within. Then once we're done, we'll come back and talk about items and subsequent picks after this. So I'm going to go and hit match. Matchmaking has been so fast. There's enough people playing this right now that I have not yet had to wait more than like 10 to 15 seconds to find a match, which has been wonderful. So there's my new uh, waifu looking character. Ooh, okay. Now you're going to be on one of, I think, five maps. This is Arena 5. It is my least favorite map of the bunch because you can't really make, like you have to make kind of weird formations. So, okay, I still give the tips here. Tip number one, you're going to play three units. You see these three empty holes right here? That means I can play three units on this round. Don't tip your hand. The important thing here is don't put very important units that the enemy could snipe with like backline access. So I'm going to play my tank right here. I'm going to play my other tank right here because I don't care if you're picking on either of those. And then I would play like my support character next, maybe somewhere right here that's sort of safe and then save my carries for later. Since I don't yet have my support character, I'm just going to play my least important character and I'm going to play her in the back line. So this way, if my enemy is running assassins like Vala themselves that are looking to snipe out, well, I'll hit confirm, to looking to snipe out my back line, I'm sacrificing my worst character. Now they're playing, you know, they've got Salazar up here and then they're covering their DPS with a tank. So who do I want to kill? I have Vala, she has backline access. I wouldn't mind playing her here, over here somewhere to look to kill the Salazar, but then I open her up to Lucius. So I'm going to play her here where she's covered by both my tanks and I am sniping for sure their Lyca, which is a high priority target. Then I will also play my Archer in another kind of covered position. Like I said, I don't love this map a ton, but I am maximizing my light heroes. Now let's see what they put for their second. I think playing this character here Ooh, okay, they're going for, this is a strong comp that they have. It's a double tank comp with a really high damage, like Wilder character there. So if my Vala and my uh, Merrily can start popping off, I'll do some work. If Vala gets tanked or shut down or crowd controlled, I could be in trouble. I do get my shields off early, which will help. Merrily's putting in a, a bit of work, but my Vala's hitting a tank, which is a... Uh, Definitely far from ideal, but my two of my, both my tanks are still alive. Only my Cassidy, the unit that I sacrificed on purpose is dead. And that's a big deal. Had Merrily or Vala been the one that they were able to target early because I had bad positioning, I probably don't win this fight. Instead, they're, you know, wolf form boy is going to be spinning in my team and killing everybody because I can't kill them. Instead, I get my first win. I earn 40 tokens that I can spend and 
I've yet to lose, which is important. Honestly, you can draw. You can just not win or lose. The important thing is don't lose. Let's see how, let's see what my damage was right, like, like right there. So, yep, Vala and Merrily absolutely carried that. So they're the ones that I protected. And you can see I sacrificed my mage, didn't care about that great win. You get your coins, whether you win or lose. So as long as you don't draw, you get your coins. Now, next round, this is an example of a bad, a bad round. There's no heroes here that I want to play. So yuck. Um, the gear isn't great. This would be okay for Merrily, but it, it cost me 10 coins and I'd rather have some dupes right now. This ring, 250 initial energy, not bad for some characters, but nothing right here is worth me spending some of my money on to go for. So I'm gonna go refresh this thing. There we go. There's a triple light bear one again. I'm going to hit that. Triple light bear is so valuable early. Oh, and I got one of the best characters in this game mode right here. I got one of the goddesses, and that's this girl right here. Tamisha is insane in this game mode. She's insane. She's insane in the game in general. And then let's talk about gear a little bit. So dagger, you want to just, especially as a newer player to this, you want to click on all the gear and see what it does and see if any of that kind of fits the team that you're building. This dagger increases damage dealt to enemies two tiles away or closer. So I really like this for only 10. See, I'm at 13. You don't want to necessarily save. I almost never save because every win is valuable. Once you get to three wins, you're already like in the positive. So I think you go mostly all in every round. You can, however, say like, okay, a Rowan dupe would be something nice for me to buy next round. I can click this lock button right here. Now that will still be there next round. That's a big tip. I'm going to buy this dagger for Tamisha. Now people are like, wait, Tamisha is a tank. Yeah, she's tanky, but in this game mode, she's a carry. This chick does massive damage. More on um, nerfs and buffs to certain characters in a minute because there are nerfs and buffs to characters in this game mode. But now I can do a couple important things. I can build a completely mono light team now. I have the units to do it. So I can actually sell units that I'm not going to use and you will get money back based on how many copies of the unit you have. You get $2 to uh, you know, coins back per duplicate. So like right here, I could sell Salazar for plus two. I just did. Now you don't always want to do that immediately. And I'll show you why here in a minute. We're going to run another fight. I'm going to go through team building again because I have more examples of team building that I want to share. So let's hit match. We're going to find ourselves our second match of the day. Try and go 2-0. Oh. You get off to a 2-0 oh start. You're feeling pretty good about yourself. Um, if you get nine wins, oh man, that's great. Uh oh, we have custom avatar person with a, oh man, high quality haircut right there. Okay, this map's an interesting one. This is Arena 4. So I'm going to put out again a very, I call this like my standard formation. I'm going to put a tank, a frontline tank in particular. I'm going to put a support in a covered position. And then I'm going to put my third character somewhere here. Now, I'm going to put Merrily out here to the side in a fairly safe place, right? I have the option of covering her from being attacked from up here by putting units here. I also have recovered from here with my tank and my support, and I have not played anything on the back line. So once again, if they look to snipe my back line, I can play for that. Now they did a good job not tipping their hand. So what I'll do here is pick the unit I wanna kill. I wanna kill their healer. So I'm gonna put my Vala here where she's targeting the healer. And then just in case they do try to get some like backline access, I'm gonna put Tamara out right here. So if they play a Vala or they play something that jumps to the back line right here, they'll be hitting these two tanks. Great, perfect, I want you hitting my tanks. And then she's gonna run around and go crazy. Now, I'm gonna hit confirm. After I hit confirm, you'll see something happen. Watch this, you're gonna see some coins gained right here, since all of these units, I'm holding on to them, and they are currently featured units in the mode, which everything is a featured unit in the mode right now, I'm pretty sure, I gain coins by holding them. So you don't always want to sell. If you don't need to sell your units to like hit a break point, don't sell. Go ahead and let them generate a few coins for you before your next match. And then you can always just sell them later. But if you are gonna hit an important, important break point, winning the next round is more valuable than saving for a little bit of economy. So that's something to consider. Now, look, did you see what I'm talking about? Tamisha ran all over this map. She's super hard to kill and she does a ton of damage. So that was great. My Vala was protected, my Tamisha was running laps, and my DPS is lived. If we look at my damage, you see what I'm talking about? 
This girl ain't just a tank. She did as much damage as my two carries. Rowan supported. I covered all my important people. GG. I, by the way, guys, I have not gotten particularly lucky. I want to make that point. These have not been super lucky pulls to this point. I have yet, by round three, I've yet to even ascend anything once. That's kind of unlucky. I have a nice character selection group right here, um, and I'm going to go ahead and add to it a bit. I'm going to go boom, boom. Only 15 left. I could refresh, but the cheapest thing you can buy is that I'll, I'll go ahead and refresh, see if I find a good 10 cost piece of gear. I did not. Now we do see our first purple piece of gear. There is blue, purple, and yellow pieces of gear that you can see they increase in price by double. So it goes from 10 to 20 to 40, but the yellow and the purple gear is insanely good. Like some of it, depending on who you're using it on, it just takes that character to the next level. So this one heals the ally, place one tile in front of the character once every five seconds. The healing amount equals 150%. I, this one's okay. I don't love it because it requires me to like line somebody up, but this is a decent support piece of gear. Um, this bow again is that range damage bow. Nothing here I really like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click start match instead of selling some stuff off on refreshing. Again, say, hold on to your units if you can. And I'll, I'll talk more about, I wanna talk about character buffs and nerfs here in just a second. But let's watch another match. And here we got Arena 1. This is my favorite map to build on because it's just generic. So watch this. I'm going to put Frontline Tank here. I'm going to put Shielding, so a Support Shielder Boy here. And then I'm going to put Rowan out. I tell my enemy nothing with this formation. Nothing. Except that I'm playing light. But if they clicked on my artifact, which you can click on their artifact, they have Sylvina. Oh, this is a tough match. This Sylvina build is insane. So it just, Sylvina's first strike where she jumps in and does damage, she gets a huge mod to it. So I want to bait that out for sure. I'm happy I clicked on that. All they know is I'm playing light and all I know is they're playing assassins. I'm going to put a tank back here because she's going to jump back here and start hitting. I'm going to try to put something back there that she can't one shot. Then I'm going to try and snipe her out. I'm going to gain aggro on her with my Vala early and hope that I can kill her because their whole team is built around her. So if I can have my main DPS kill their entire comp, that's going to feel like a win for me. Let's see if I can do it. So Sylvina jumped to the back line and was unable to one shot my tank who then gets the shield and almost lived, but lived long enough that I've kind of crowd controlled her as long as she doesn't start popping off on me. Tell you, okay, I killed her. I'm going to win. I feel like now I probably win. They do have annoying jumps around the map everywhere, boy, and I've lost to Maria. So that was kind of the trade off right here. Honestly, they have a pretty good team comp in general, but my Vala is still alive. My shield bro is still alive if i can kill their tank jumping man i don't think he has the damage to kill me let's see boom kill the tank get the ult off kill him pop oh he's still out of life okay so we lose that one all right that's fine they had some op heroes and tamaria dying early had i had some dupes of her or maybe a tankier piece of gear that wouldn't have happened or that would have been a really good spot for me to have um lionel the lion guy the lion tank who gets his Brutus. My God, Lionel, what is this? You know, sort of whatever. Give me anyway. He gets that immunity like he doesn't die. There's items in the game that give that. That's a great counter to that comp you just saw. Now, I've leveled up my luxurious satchel one. So I get to pick another effect. All heroes with epic equipment gain 10% increase in stats or grant the foremost allied hero 20% attack, physical defense, and magic. I can pick one of these. They're not the same every time. I'm going to go ahead and do the epic equipment one because I don't just feel like buffing my tank. And I'm pretty much always going to have a frontline tank in this comp. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one and then I'll just have to be buying up some epic equipment. All right, good. Thank you. I can close that now. So there's my first ascension. Vala ascends. That's huge. I would have definitely won that last fight had Vala been ascended. Then I'll buy the triple light bearer run again. Ooh, not a great buy. Kind of a miss there. I want to go back a couple of screens here if I can and show you guys something. Can I go back? Okay, featured heroes. If you click featured heroes, the featured hero list, which I think this will change. Like right now, you can see it's like a ton of featured heroes. So these will who who will appear in the game. Um, these are the ones that if you have them in your inventory, you get the coins after every round. 
Here are the nerfs and the buffs. So you can see, for example, you know, our Graveborn tank, who does a ton of damage in the real game, has a minus 30% to his damage. That's a huge nerf. Merrily has a 10% damage buff. There's Brutus, aka Lionel. He has 10% more damage. This tank, who I don't think is very good in the regular game, has a 15% damage reduction, you know, buff added to him. Um, again, the, our light tank has healing and damage taken buffed. Uh, damage dealt down for, you know, Cecia, who's OP in the game. And you can see the rest of the buffs right here. This is great. Energy on hit right here for uh, my light tanking girl. You can see why she's so good in this game type. She's harder to kill, popping her ult and her stuns all the time. So you can look at these and kind of play around these and it will make the experience a little bit different than it is in the regular game. So I wanted to show that off. Okay, let's play one more. I just pumped my Vala up once. I have 24 left to spin. I'm going to look at my like rarer gear frost emblem. This is a buff for, mm, I don't love that one at all. I haven't seen any gear I like yet. Ooh, there's an upgrade to my tank. I'm going to snag that. Then I'm going to go ahead and snag. Oh, can't snag him. So I'm going to save him for next time. Okay. I'm going to play a few more rounds and then I'm going to cut and I'm going to come back in when I see some gear that I really like. Okay, here we go. I picked up a couple more wins and now you see I'm starting to get some of these yellow gears. The colorful exoplanet, for example. Look how powerful this is. Once you see gear that fits your team comp this much, that's when you start investing into it. Now, there's a few blue pieces of gear that for 10 will like give you a shield or reduce your damage taken. And if you feel like you need that to kind of like keep progressing, pick that up. But really keep your eye open for stuff like colorful exoplanet planet increase ultimate damage by 60 percent and restores additional 200 energy when the character defeats an enemy does anything scream vala more than that no you pick that up you're gonna buy that thing then i'm gonna refresh the shop i'm getting baited a little bit right here you can see i have potential upgrades for characters that i'm currently not using i'm just gonna pass on those there's a character that i'm definitely using i need to get her upgraded if i'm gonna keep winning um See if I can, oh, a double. Sometimes you'll see this, two units. Those are worth buying if they're units that you use. This is a good piece of gear. Mindful bow, if you're using an archer type character, this will, she shoots, and then also shoots the weakest enemy on the map for 40% of that damage. Very useful piece of purple gear right there. I'm gonna pick up the Rowan duplicates right here because it will instantly upgrade him, making four out of the five current players that I'm using ascended once. I'm gonna lock that right there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do my fight. Now, this will be the last match that, oh, let me show you something real quick, formation. Here's where you equip your gear. Boom, click that, put that on Vala. Make sure you don't forget to do that. Um, but the game prompts you. If you have gear just sitting in your inventory, the game will prompt you to go ahead and do it. So if I win this, I believe it'll be my fifth or sixth win of this round, which means I'm set to already gain some good points. So just last match of this video, this is, you know, let's just do one more. I'm gonna once again set up my, I'm not gonna tell you anything you don't know about my comp initial setup. I'm running tank, two supports right here. The tank is covering them from just like a frontal assault. And if they're running some like crazy backline access team, you're probably gonna see Jumper Bro again. Everybody plays Jumper Bro and I'm telling you, he's not actually that great. Here, one thing about this map that's cool is I can play Tamaria all the way back here. So she'll bait out any kind of like assassination attempt. Then I can play Vala covered over here. So I have my furthest back character that could be the target of a jump in or something like that. Um, and I'm safe and she can ride over walls. So that'll really help me out here. Let's see. Okay, they're playing a ice comp maybe with uh, you know our ice mage. We'll see if my, if my Vala can start ulting, especially with that new piece of gear I just got, she's gonna just be one-shotting people. There she one-shot their Cecia. You can see Tamar's just running around the back line. And like we even killed annoying jump bro already. I'm telling you guys like, I don't know. I've seen so many people say how like hard that guy is to fight against. His damage is pretty mid. He's just annoying. He's just annoying. His real value, Jump Bro's value is a bait. He's You can't lock him down and kill him. So um, his value is in like getting your assassins on the, on the enemy team to target him or something like that. And then they just can't take him out instantly. That's where his value lies. He's not really a hard carry for your team. Um, 
that's that's my take on him anyway. Some people will disagree with that. Here's a great example of a good piece of gear. And there's a whole line of this gear. There's a blue version of this as well. This grants a shield for 12% of your max HP every five seconds and taunts enemies three tiles away. Boom, pick that up. Put it on your guy, Lucius, right here. He just powered up in a big way. Still kind of looking for any like OP gear. That one's pretty good, but it's a pretty good support item. I'm not going to pick it up though. Um, Run it down to 30. Oh, baby. There's double Tamaras or Tamarias. Is it Tamara or Tamaria? Tamisia. I've been saying it wrong the whole time. And I'll also lock her other dupe. Sword of Justice is decent, but it prevents you from using your ult. And for her, for uh, Tamisia again, Heavy Axe. Increases damage dealt to enemy two tiles away or closer by 30% and reduces the damage you take. That's pro for her. I'm going to lock up some things for her for the rest of this match. Okay, guys, I'm not going to make you watch the rest of this thing, and I want to keep this video fairly short so it doesn't turn people away. But if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. I'll try to follow the comments on this video closer than I normally do uh, so I can answer them. Or if you have any tips you would like to leave for other people, leave them. I have been having a ton of fun with this, and I've been very successful kind of utilizing those strategies that I said. It. I might need to do a more in-depth guide to this maybe like a team comp kind of guide there's some comps like this mono light comp that i have played to massive amounts of success in this mode and so maybe i could do a guide for just those if y'all want them okay thank you guys for watching i'll catch you in the next one peace